how to lie with charts. People on purpose or by accident quite often lie with charts. In this lecture, I will show you the most often used methods with some examples. So let's briefly go through the six main methods. So first of all, you quite often will see people playing with the axis to make the difference in numbers look smaller or bigger. You will also be exposed to some trend lines being put on the data to suggest certain trend that actually does not exist. In many cases, by proper choice of units or colors, you can make certain things look bigger or smaller. Another way to influence the perception is simply to select the proper period of the data to support the hypothesis. And we will have a look at some examples of that as well. And finally, you can simply not play with the chart, but rather put a message in a proper manner so that somebody who reads the message first is influenced by it. And when he's looking at the data, he does not pay that much attention to the reality. So let's have a look at some examples how this can be done in practice. So as we said, the first one is to play with the axis. And we will have example here. As you can see, the difference between year one and three looks extremely big. However, when you look at the axis, it is actually due to the fact that we have the axis starting from 99 and finishing at 103. Therefore, although 100 is very close to 102, 102 column looks almost three times bigger as the one in year one. The proper chart should be something like that, where you can see that actually there is no difference between year one, two, and three. Sometimes to make the things less obvious, you would have a situation where the axis is not there. So then you really have to look carefully at the values. Now let's have a look at the example of trend lines. So here we will have certain number of data gathered by the consultant. And let's say he's put the trend line like that, which would suggest that there is a big correlation between what we've got on the Y axis and what we've got on an X axis. However, the reality is that there is actually no relation between them. So as you can see, we've got the same data, but simply by putting the line in a proper manner, I can influence the perception of the data. Now let's have a look at the choice of units. For example, let's assume that I want to have the revenues look bigger. So instead of showing it in millions, I can show it in thousands and then the numbers look much bigger. In reality, it should be probably something like that. Now let's have a look at the choice of colors. And here we will have a look at an example of um, funnels for different industries. And when you look at the colors, there's hardly any difference between them. And this is due to the fact that we have created very wide intervals and therefore the differences between each and every industry don't look big. However, if we did it in a proper manner, it more likely should look like this. So here we've got smaller intervals and thanks to that, color coding actually tells you uh, something. So this is the wrong example where you use colors, but actually they don't mean anything. And they're used in such a manner to hide certain differences, to make them less obvious. And this is the proper way to do that. So you have smaller intervals and bigger differences in the colors. As we said, quite often you don't actually have to impact the charts directly. You sometimes can be more subtle. And the first way to do that is simply to select the period that supports the hypothesis. So in our example, we want to convey the following message. So we want to show that the revenue have increased in recent years. And the reality looks like that. So it's going up from year one to two, but then it's going down and then going up. So it would suggest that there is probably some seasonality or there were some occasional problems happening. So in other words, this is not consistent with the message we want to convey. So if we wanted to stick with the message, we would most likely have to adjust the period we are looking at. So let's say instead of looking at all six years, we're just gonna look at the last three. So in reality, there is some seasonality, not always successful. However, if we just look at the curated data limited to the last three years, you see a huge growth. And the last way to, again, in a more subtle manner, manipulate the perception is simply to play with the message. So we don't play with the charts directly. However, we adjust the message. And let's have a look again at an example. So we've got sales by months. And as you can see, in month two, there was a huge drop, which continued also in month three. And then we came back in month four to the level of around 300,000 of euro sales. 
However, in the message, as you can see, we have a different conclusion. So we have that there was a slight decrease in the sales in the months two and three. That was caused by some small problems. The proper message should be actually that there was a large drop in sales. So the data are the same. We just impacted the message. So that's in short, as I have said, try to look always at this sort of ways in which people may manipulate you through charts. So always check the axes, trend lines, units, colors, how they are defined, and make sure that somebody did not select the period of data that is supporting his message. And finally, always check the message against the chart.